Well, it's a bit chilly this morning. Let me get some breakfast going. I don't want to sit on the ground, so pull the chair out. I try to stow everything. If I know it's going to snow, now this whole weather system was completely unexpected. You probably hear my diesel heater that I cranked up this morning very early as it got a lot colder than I expected. Now until I get the electrics done, um, I still do most of my cooking outside. Those of you that have used any propane anything in the cold, um, you know how frustrating it can actually be. Uh, tanks start freezing up, uh, pressures drop, things don't work quite like they're supposed to. There we go. There we go, just took a second to kind of bleed the system. Pilot's lit. And now the rest of it's lit up pretty well. All right, now as this warms up, you can see there's a, uh, a venting system on top. And so you can kind of lock these closed to get more dispersed heat, as well as bring it more up towards the top. So I will tell you, I normally kind of set it like that to get things fired up, to get this cast iron. Uh, it's quite cold out this morning. Get it up to temperature. And then a lot of my cooking I'll actually do with that crank down there. but. Let's get the dog hair off there and get some breakfast going. All right, again, didn't take long for that propane to kind of heat up. I'm gonna get the bagel on there. All right. Doesn't want to spray the avocado oil, it's a little cold this morning. And whoever cut this bagel, and you had one job. <laughs> that is a fail on that one. <laughs> All right, let's get this thing toasted up. Now, once the pan's up to temp, I'm gonna knock that heat down just a little bit and there will be enough residual heat to get everything toasted and get the egg cooked up. Oh yeah, properly toasted. Now unfortunately my egg, even though it was in a hard case, completely cracked in the right out here. I think we can make it work. Put a glob of cream cheese in here to warm up. All right, let's check this masterpiece. Ham's just warming up, eggs cooked. Let's get the egg in here to heat that up. Ham's almost toasted. You can tell by the way it is. You can tell the uh, you know the heat is turned down. When it's fully diffused on low, you know you're not even browning the ham. It's just especially out here and it's 30 degrees. Um, you know, this is just, it's pretty easy to kind of adjust your heat for how you want to cook. Well guys, that's breakfast. Like I said, I've got lots of different ways to cook, but this gives you an opportunity to kind of warm up your hands, warm up a space. Um, I don't even use a plate. As I said, I'm a simple guy. I've got a handkerchief as a plate here. Uh, anything I can't finish, I'm sure my sidekick will. Take a break. Okay, sit. There you go. All right, guys, breakfast is done. I'm going to kind of just take a slow morning. We're actually out in the BLM, not too far off of the highway. This was a business trip, uh, not a pleasure trip. Decided to take the dog and the bus because I, I didn't want to drive the miles that I needed to drive. Um, and get a hotel so I just grabbed the bus and we pulled out here and as you can see woke up to a very frosty night So I was glad I got the, off the highway when I did uh, when it was slick out So today I thought I would cover this Ignic system and I'm calling it a system because I received both the growler and the two-in-one stove here uh, about five months ago before our big November trip and I like it um, What I would closest compare it to would be the big buddy heaters um, a lot of you guys are still running the buddy heaters in your vans or your RVs or anything like that for winter or just having a good backup system. Um, this is about 4,000 to 10,000 BTUs depending on high or low. And then of course, as you saw with this cast uh, iron top that they've added and the way the, uh, the, the kind of wings here work is you can adjust the flame to basically heat right above it. And so I've done everything from cook coffee, or heat coffee, make coffee, um, 
in you know, the back country, a lot of times I'll just set it up and turn it on low and keep it as a hand warming station when we're out playing in the winter areas, out playing in the snow as a family. Um, it's nice to come over here and, and warm your hands by it. I will say it doesn't do great in the wind, but no propane catalytic heater like a big buddy would do great in the wind. So this thing really shines when you can get it sheltered a little bit or if you put it in a closed space. So although this does have some safety features as far as tip over, uh, there's no oxygen sensor in here so I'd be very cautious about using it inside of a bus or in a closed space, but it works very well. Um, I think the biggest market right now uh, is all these gazelle tents. You see them all over the overland, social media, they are getting very popular and I believe that they can have the floor taken out. And that's what I would say. I've got some teepees that we tried using it in that I've used in a hot stove setup before, uh, but it wasn't big enough for the whole family. I don't have a tent space big enough for the whole family um, yet. But uh, that's where this really shines. As you get it into a shelter situation, and you still may even be able to hear the highway over my diesel heater. And again, I primarily use the diesel heater to heat the bus, but this is a great backup and it works really well. Um, the only downsides is it's a bit gangly, the way they've got the conversion set up. So if you buy just this system, it, the hose that comes on it can adapt to a five, or excuse me, a one pound green propane tank. And then this is the adapter that will run to the, uh, the gas growler that they call it. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, so just the way this works, it's a bit gangly. Uh, sometimes it's hard to kind of set up and get exactly where you want it. But this has a really nice handle. I've never had this get too hot. But again, I'm always using it out here in the cold in the winter. So this isn't something I'd necessarily bring in the summertime, simply as a cooking device, because it is pretty bulky. Um, you know, I'd love to be able to see if we could get the size of this down a little bit, but then you will lose some of the stability if you actually got a good size pot on here as well. And then the other thing is, I would love to see a carrying case for this. Um, it's my biggest pet peeve with any sort of stove system out there that I have, that when you're done cooking out here and you need to pack it up and you wanna keep it clean, when it goes inside, it would be nice to have. Um, keeps it from rolling around, rattling. It'd be nice to have a case on it. Now, saying that, the price is pretty high already, but it's very versatile um, and it's worked really well for all of our adventures that we've done. All right, guys, so what I'm powering this with is effectively, it's a five pound propane tank. Uh, these guys call it a gas growler. And although it's pretty kitschy outside to it, um, I actually really like the way they designed this. This holds the five gallon or five pounds, excuse me, propane tank. Now these you can pick up all over the place. Um, these are very big in the sort of smaller trailer overland industry right now. That's really where they're starting to shine. There's a lot of companies that make really cool cases so you can mount this to the outside of your van or your RV or your adventure trailer. Um, in my case, because I don't have a dedicated propane system in the bus, um, and I'm also putting it in and out different vehicles, I wanna, I wanna bring it with me. But the problem is, these are very unwieldy. I don't like the idea of putting propane tanks that aren't secured in a vehicle. So if you can see the inside of the case here, the gas growler case, is a custom molded foam neoprene piece in here. Really good zippers. Heavy duty canvas material on the outside with really good webbing and stitching. Um, I don't almost call this a molly, but they have a daisy chain, which I'll put some close ups as we talk. But the daisy chain on the outside with the webbing allows me to lash this or attach this any way I want. It doesn't have to be upright, it can be laying down and I can just make sure that in the event of a wreck or anything else, it's not just rolling around. And then there's also matching neoprene indentations in the bottom. And as well as this sort of, sort of fake leather uh, cap system. But everything's worked as advertised. It has held up really well. Uh, the one thing I knew was gonna happen when I first got it, as I knew that white canvas wouldn't stay white. And so you can probably see on there, it's got some stains and some dirt and a few things from rolling around and being in the snow and, and all over. This, that might even be coffee on there. I'm not sure what that is on the back. Um, but nice strong handle on top and just a good solid carrying case. It gives you a little bit of protection and a really easy way of lashing this down. So you can buy these together. I believe you can just buy the case itself if you already have a five pound uh, propane tank. Again, there's other companies out there that make it. But the biggest reason for this company making it is just to save on waste. Uh, those one pound propane cylinders are extremely wasteful. Uh, they're hard or difficult 
and sometimes dangerous depending on how you try to do it to re refill. There are some companies that make refillable small one pounds, um, but this five pound is a really good size for most weekend adventures depending on what you're doing. Now if you decide to use it for heating, heating is going to use up a lot of propane. You can find that out any of you guys that have run a big buddy heater. Um, you know that that one pound on high is only going to get you a couple hours and it's going to start diminishing. And so having something like this is going to definitely get you out in the back country longer um, to stay warmer and have something that you can refill without filling the landfill with those green bottles. And so I like the idea of it. Uh, the, the tank itself is not a new idea, but I like the cover and that's their message is, you know, maybe look into getting a reusable propane bottle if you don't want to carry the big propane like 20 pound barbecue tanks around um, it's just very unwieldy and even in the large adventure bus I just don't see the size uh, weight ratio for the, the amount that I use propane for cooking all right guys I'm gonna sign off here uh, the Sun's coming out a little bit through the fog and so we're gonna get headed out of here but this is kind of what I've been testing again I don't always bring the heater but if I'm using propane I've been using the propane growler quite a lot and I'll put links down for all this down below. More importantly, I want to hear what you guys think, what you guys are using uh, to cook on your adventures, or whether or not you think it'd be a good idea to pick up something like a Big Buddy heater that you can cook on, like their two-in-one system, or if you've ever considered a five pound uh, propane tank for any of your cooking or heating needs um, in sort of your adventures. So I don't know, I really like it. They've got some other really cool products that I would love to get a hold of. Um, some heated blankets and things like that. So we may not be done with this company. Uh, it's cool. It's really nice. They do good quality work. And again, really the only downsides is I would love to see a carrying case uh, for the heater. And I would love maybe something system so the, the hoses aren't quite so unwieldy. But those are pretty minor things when you're out here in the backcountry enjoying yourself and staying warm and cooking a hot meal. Wander and B signing off, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll see you down the road. Thanks for all the love and support. You guys are amazing. Please like, share, and subscribe. Follow the adventure on social media, and we'll see you on the road.